Greetings, welcome back to Randomtronic. Today I'll be putting another kit together. What I've got here is a little clock kit. It's a DIY YSZ-4 kit. At least that's what it says on the circuit board. I will post a link in the description of the video to the shop and to this particular item. The entire clock is based on the Atmo 8089C2051. It's a microcontroller that goes here and pretty much does all the magic. So that's what drives the LED display, drives the buzzer, that's what takes the input from the switches, from the push buttons. Simple kit, there isn't uh, much to understand about it because the whole magic electronic stuff happens inside the microcontroller. Uh, this comes pre-programmed, so we don't have to do anything. All we have to do is solder this together and yeah, switch it on, I guess. What we have is a DIP20 socket, Atmo chip, Two 10K resistors, an electrolytic capacitor, 10 microfarad, a buzzer for making annoying noises, and two 30 picofarads capacitors, a 12 megahertz crystal, a resistor ladder, 102J. This is just a whole bunch of resistors. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, eight resistors in one package. Basically, the first pin is common for all the resistors, and there is 1K resistor going into every pin from the common pin. 8550, so that will be a PNP, I believe. A PNP transistor, push button, a second push button, power lead. Oh, this runs off of 5 volts conveniently, so from an USB. And a nice big 7 segment LED display. Still the plastic film on it. There we go. Nice and pretty. And of course the circuit board. There's also no instructions with this, but it's self-explanatory when you look at the circuit board. Straightforward to put it together. So I guess let's smelt some solder. Oh, by the way, for a reference circuit board is 42 millimeters by 52 millimeters. So it's a good idea to start assembling something like this. Lowest profile components first, so usually that falls down to resistors. You can bend the leads out so they stay in place a little bit. And the second 10k, only two resistors on the entire board. Well, excluding the resistor ladder. Little 30 picofarad capacitors, those are forming the oscillator along with the crystal. 12 megahertz precisely so this is what provides our accuracy for the clock this should be really quick to solder resistor ladder let's put the socket in first as much as it makes no difference uh, for your own reference it's always good to match up the socket with the pin one so you've got the little indent on the circuit board i'm just gonna hold it now and tuck just two pins in the corner and yeah, the resistor ladder. It's important to note of the pin 1 orientation, so there's a little dot on here. Elegant way to, if you need to put a whole bunch of resistors to a lot of pins, like in a case of 7 segment display. Run through this now and solder everything properly. I'm using a massive tip, the biggest tip I had, just to see how that would work. Actually, the tip doesn't need to be that small, it's much more convenient to use a larger tip because it has got greater thermal mass to solder. It's also much easier to bridge stuff, as you can see. And the resistor ladder. Okay, that looks okay so far. Well, next thing we can put in the little switches. And the holes for the switches seem a little bit tight. And to presumably, we'll be able to use those push buttons to set the time. I'm not sure if this is a clock or a timer. 10 microfarad that goes here. Here, yeah, and we've got a little barrel jack. I forgot about that before. One more cap and a transistor. The transistor, I presume, only is used to drive the buzzer because the, put it backwards, uh, because the buzzer takes a significant amount of current, too much for the microcontroller to drive directly. An LED, like in a seven segment display, is fine most of the time. A buzzer is, is not. Put the buzzer in the right way. And that was a super quick build. The seven segment display, Mind the orientation. I will, I will assume that it's this way. Just tuck two of the pins and then we can solder the rest of them. It's always fun to solder something together, even if it's just a simple kit. Let's make sure the pins are straight. I can switch off the extractor fan. 
Right, that's in. So let's find out. Is it a clock or a timer? Cable about a meter long. Let's plug it in somewhere. That will do. And we have... Well, it says 12.59, so I assume it's a clock. Oh, now it displays minutes and seconds. Now it's uh, 12.59. 59.56 and it should turn over to 1. Hmm? There's always beep when you go to full hour. That would be annoying. It says 1300 hours. I've pressed and held the first button and it's showing A13. A14, 15, 16, 17. That must be hour. Now 8 and 00. zero. That beep is annoying. Let's set it to 41. 42 is it is next one c on what is c on c off is that that beep okay chime chime on or off let's switch that to off because that was annoying zero on zero off i don't know what zero on off is this something is on and we can set it to off and back to time nice little clock now if i unplug this will it remember the time nope oh dear there you go that's the little kit it's a nice little kit but as you can see but as you can see yeah it's more of a educational than practical thing it's nice to put together fairly easy it's a very it's a beginner's kit i would class this as a simplest of the simple uh, because everything is in a microcontroller so all there is to it is just a few components to put together the display is very visible it's just the camera is uh, responding in a funny way to the red blinking light you can see it's multiplexing the the segments so it's blinking a little bit but when you look at it naked eye it doesn't do that at all Thank you very much for watching. Thank you for joining me for this really quick build. I haven't worked out what this O on or off is or zero on off. And this, let's call that G. It's on right now for today. That's it. Take care.